de Estados Unidos. Ella es, trabaja en el TIR Memorial Herman. Se graduó en cuidado respiratorio aplicado a la ciencia en San Jacinto College. Es miembro de la American Association of Respiratory Care y de la Texas Association of Respiratory Care. Uh, welcome, Amy. We listen to you. Please, can you share your screen? Okay. Let's see. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, the pulmonary interventions that we can use, therapies that we can use to help um, patients, uh, spinal cord injury patients with COVID, um, to um, help clear their airways, help them take deep breaths, cough, clear the secretions. Um, here in our area, um, typical COVID patients in the ICUs right now are not having increased secretions, um, but typically in our spinal cord patients, we do have increased secretions. Um, one thing of note that, uh, that uh, therapists in the ICUs have reported to me is that there is um, an increase in mucus plugging and in blood clots. So that's something definitely to be watching out for. Um, so, but there are things that we can do to, um, to help with the, the mucus clearance. The most important oh, thing. Amy? Yes. Amy, we cannot see your screen. Oh. Can you share it? How do I? Where? Oh. Not that one. Laura, help me. Share. Share. Okay. Does it show me now? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Oh. Do I make that go away? Okay. So you can see my slides now? Yes. Okay. How do I make this go? All right. Um, the most important thing uh, is to make sure that you're using uh, the proper protective equipment with all the techniques that I describe. Um, they are trying to, we want to reduce um, any uh, aerosolized producing procedures. We need to make sure that you have proper uh, protective equipment. So for if some reason um, there is not you do not have access to certain equipment. So like an N95 mask, if you're um, doing open tracheal suctioning, things of that nature, then you really need to weigh out the risk benefit um, at that time to make sure that what you're doing is appropriate for the patient and safe for yourself. Um, so keep that in mind as we go through each of the modalities. Um, right now, what were the, the recommendations per the CDC is they would like um, us to use the uh, meter dose inhalers and MDI. So those can be given um, with patients with an airway and also without an airway. So that's the preferred method if we need to deliver bronchodilators. Um, so with the mouthpiece, a spacer is good, especially if they are short of breath. Um, and a lot of times the dosages are higher to um, uh, be the same dosage as what you would receive in a nebulizer treatment. Um, and then you'll see on the right side of the screen, the tracheostomy, they do have an attachment for that. Um, sometimes they'll have a little uh, smaller adapter that you can use, but that is sometimes available. Um, so that, that may be an option even with your tracheostomy patients. So we want to do, um, just like with oxygen, we want to do dry um, oxygen delivery, such as nasal cannulas, venturi masks. We're trying to stay away from using high flow unless the patient needs it. Um, and uh, the same thing with nebulizer treatments, which are aerosol generating procedures. So ideally, if, if this is a fit, this is one way it can be done um, with patients, even with uh, tracheostomy. If we're needing to give um, Breathing treatments, uh, one option is a filtered nebulizer, and that is uh, something that's commonly doing, uh, they're doing in the acute care facilities. Um, so what it is, is you've got your nebulizer 
just like you would have um, in your facility. And this is the corrugated tubing. And so what they've added, and you can buy them this way, or if you have access to one-way valves, this is a one-way valve. So they breathe in through and breathe in the medication. And then you can be through a mouthpiece as seen here, or down here, this is a trach tube adapter. So you can put that on the tracheostomy tube. And so as they breathe in, the medication comes down through the nebulizer, through the mouthpiece, they need to make a good seal. Um, so they need to be able to be, you know, follow commands. Um, and then the trach tube adapter, uh, the same thing, you know, um, that, that way they breathe in and out. If you're going to be using the trach tube adapter, I would recommend for infection control, um, you know, cross contamination that you put a mask, even if the patient, even if the patient has a trach tube or um, whether the cuff is inflated or deflated, it would be a good idea to put a mask over the patient's mouth and nose uh, when you're doing anything, you know, aerosol generating. So, and then on the exhalation side, you have a filter. So that's your expiratory filter. So that's where the patient is going to exhale. Um, so you want to use a filter that's a low resistance filter, um, something that has antiviral, antibacterial properties. Um, it wouldn't be like an HME or one of the HEPA filters that you use in the ventilator. Um, it would be something that's used more for spirometry, vital capacities, um, things like that. So that is one way that if you must deliver an aerosolized treatment, that it makes it a little bit safer, but you still would need to use the um, proper protective equipment. So an N95 mask would still be needed to be used because as you're delivering this treatment, the patient is probably going to be coughing, producing sputum. So you want to definitely protect yourself if this is indicated. So a reason that you might use the nebulizer treatment versus an MDI would be if you're delivering a mucolytic like mucomist, acetylcysteine, or something uh, like a hypertonic saline um, to, to help with their cough, to help uh, clear cough from the, the upper airway. So once we're doing the things that we're doing, I'm about to show you the different respiratory modalities, um, secretions may need to be cleared. So um, if they aren't able to just cough it out on their own. So one option for patients without an airway is nasal tracheal or NT suctioning. Um, if you're going to have to be doing that frequently, if you have access, these uh, devices down here are called a nasal trumpet. You put it on the patient and measure it from the nair to the back of the mandible, and then you use a KY, you know, whatever lubricant, water-based lubricant. And what that does is it protects the patient's airway from trauma. And so you would wanna change that out each day um, to maybe switch to the other side. And that's if you have a patient with a productive cough, as long as they're not using accessory muscles or um, in extreme shortness of breath, that may be a way to clear secretions um, while they're having these issues and even prevent having to insert an airway into the patient, uh, you know, prevent intubation if it's just a matter of clearing secretions. Um, uh, for an advanced airway, we can, even if they're not on a ventilator, we can still create somewhat of a closed tracheal suction. So the picture here, this is an inline suction that we would use on a ventilator or a T-piece. Um, and so if you take this suction unit, the, the inline suction, and you use that uh, with the filter, like we recommended in the first picture, and put a one-way valve, again, in between on the right-hand side of it, so that's where the patient would be able to exhale. The blue tubing that's attached would be hooked to whatever, either aerosol or a, um, or a Vinnie mask, some kind of uh, you know, oxygen, if they're on oxygen. And so that's gonna create more of a, a closed um, unit. So if you're having to remove that to do some of the modalities and then put that back on to suction, Again, you're going to need to make sure that you're wearing the proper protective equipment. So if it's a patient that is suspected to have 
uh, COVID-19 or a patient that is positive, you would still need to protect yourself um, with that. But it, it definitely decreases the risk of uh, cross-contamination. So some different modalities that can be used to clear secretions. So this would be the vibratory positive expiratory pressure, PEP therapy. So what this is, is the first one over here, these devices are all the same. These are just different types. This is an acapella. Um, on this side, sometimes they call it the pickle because it's green. Um, this one is a handheld device, uh, a Curaplex Vibrapep. And then we've got an Aerobica. Um, what they are used for is to clear secretions in the upper airway. As the patient exhales through it, um, usually we have them breathe through it normally and then do a series of more forceful exhalations. So as they're exhaling into the device, there's a bladder inside that causes vibrations. So in the upper airway, it will actually loosen and help remove the secretions from the airways and actually have kind of a ciliary action to bring them up and out of the airway. So many times you'll have to do several series of that, but they, if, if the patient has um, an, you know, a decent um, inspiratory and expiratory effort, then those can be very helpful. So that might be one of your tetra or quadriplegics um, that has, you know, developed more strength, maybe isn't in the acute phase of their injury um, and has contracted COVID. So this might be a way again to keep from having to intubate them, place them on a ventilator um, if we can clear their secretions out. Um, another technique that can be used is um, manual chest physiotherapy. So that um, is done, accomplished by um, basically beating or, or doing uh, percussive motions on someone's chest. The important thing is that you're not doing that with a flat hand. You cup your shape, you know, the, your hand. And so you should have that, it's like a little air pocket kind of sound on the patient. Um, it can be done with them sitting up, um, depending on the uh, injury that they have, where they are in their injury. Um, you can do postural drainage, which I've attached the um, uh, uh, positions for those different lung segments that you can drain. So what will happen is if you're able to position your patient, so face down, you know, prone is not going to be an option um, for most of our spinal cord patients, but generally they can turn to the left or the right side. Sometimes they can tolerate their head down a little bit. So that helps. Um, aid with the secretions coming up and out of the airway, clearing the mucus out of the airway. And then the percussion helps to loosen it from the airways themselves so that the patients are able to cough it up a little bit easier, or we can use uh, maybe the PEP therapy and suctioning to finish clearing out the airway for them. Another um, way that you can accomplish that is uh, it's a similar to the cup therapy the manual therapy it's chest physio uh, vest chest physiotherapy and so in this case they're hooked to equipment with the tubes and you can see the two different types of vests um, most commonly it's the wraparound vest that's on the right and so we've used those even in the ICU settings. Um, contraindications would be fractured ribs, anyone with a uh, new um, feeding tube that has been placed. So those are not patients that this would be appropriate for, or depending on where their surgery was, if they had um, acute you know, spinal cord surgery. So this works very well. It goes through different cycles, time to cycles, a treatment usually takes about 10 minutes. Um, and so what it does is that there's a bladder on that vest that inflates, and then it runs through different hertz and frequencies. Um, and so one series running for maybe 20 seconds runs and um, loosens the mucus from the airways, and then it changes and actually has a motion that brings the, the secretions, again, mimicking that ciliary motion and brings the secretions up. We've had a lot of success with this um, in our spinal cord patients. Um, 
to help clear their airways and, and bring the mucus up and out. Um, and this is in both patients that are um, trached and patients without an advanced airway. Uh, more invasive devices would be the mechanical inexufflation, exufflation devices. We call them cough assists. Um, the ones on the top, the, the one on the top left is the newer model. Um, the one on the right is um, an older version, but is still in use. And the one on the bottom is more of an original version. They all work the same. It's just a matter of how you plug in those settings. So what you're doing is you're setting an inspiratory pressure and time. So the machine's gonna give them a breath, let's say for two seconds and at anywhere from 20 to 40 uh, centimeters of water. And then there's going to be a pause. And then you're going to have an expiratory pressure again for usually two seconds. Um, and the negative inspiratory, expiratory pressure is set between 20 and 40 as well. So just depending on their, uh, the, the strength of their cough, how much assistance they need. Um, and so it'll go through a cycle. We usually go through a cycle of three to five breaths. Then we either clear their airway or allow them to cough. And then we repeat that as many times, usually again, three to five breaths, for three to five cycles is usually more than enough. So it's just, you assess your patient, see what they need, see if their breath sounds improve, if they're able to expectorate uh, their secretions. You'll see that it can be delivered through a mask, it can be done through a mouthpiece, and then it can also be done with the little Omniflex that hooks to the tracheostomy tube. Um, so we've had great success in doing this with patients with an advanced airway and without an advanced airway. Um, even patients that have been decannulated, contracted an upper respiratory infection and their cough was still weak. So we would use this device to help get them through that time um, and prevented them from having to be ventilated um, or you know, have to go back into the ICU. So it's a, a quite effective tool. Another um, really promising and um, effective method would be the lung volume recruitment, LVR. Um, so it's accomplished by um, taking an AMBU bag, your regular resuscitator bag, and you're going to put a one-way valve on it. Um, and so it's going to let the air out of the bag, but not let it back in. You need to make sure that your patient is awake and alert and can cooperate. Um, with the COVID-19 um, guidelines, we do recommend putting again a viral filter in. Um, in this case, on this slide, we're doing this with a patient that is um, using it via mouthpiece. So he is able to take meet meet his um, uh, increased lung volume. So we're going to give them, usually it's three to five breaths. Um, you communicate with your patient, uh, give them a, a nice deep breath, and you'll notice that the, the clinician is wearing a mask and a shield. If this is a COVID patient that you were doing this with, then you would want to make sure to wear your N95 mask. Um, so you're gonna give them those breaths and then you're going to help them with a manual assisted cough. So interestingly enough, I show the peak flow meter because in this case, uh, this gentleman's um, peak cough flow was 80, uh, 80 before he started and 80 liters per minute. When they did the LVR, it increased to 350. And then when they combined the LVR with the manually assisted cough, it increased to 560 liters a minute. So it's quite an effective method. Um, some contraindications again would be um, if someone had a pneumothorax, cracked ribs, new peg tube, you wouldn't wanna do the manually assisted cough. It's also good, it's, we use it commonly in the uh, inpatient rehab setting to prevent um, and treat atelectasis. 
So when you're setting up the bag, um, you want to make sure to also label it that it's LVR, it's not for resuscitation, and we usually cut the tubing kind of as a sign to everyone that that is not a bag to be used because it would be dangerous because it's got a one-way valve on it. Um, so that's how you use it in a patient with a mouthpiece. This slide shows, so a patient with a tracheostomy, you would remove uh, the mouthpiece and you could, you would use the trach tube adapter, keeping in mind that the tracheostomy cuff must be deflated or a cuffless trach. Um, so you go through the same process, the patient would um, try to reach maximum lung capacity and then have them hold their breath for a few seconds or as long as they can. And then you go through that assisted cough. Um, and then if they need suction to clear the airway, you would do that. So, um, and that's what I was discussing earlier with that closed suction unit. If you're just suctioning your patient, it stays to be a pretty, you know, a pretty closed unit, but if you're switching between modalities, you just have to keep in mind that there's the potential for them to cough in between. So as you're switching from the LVR bag to the, um, the inline suction, there's that potential that there's going to be a productive cough. So, and usually the cough is quite forceful after the LVR. So you just wanna make sure that that, that bag is labeled, that your one-way one -way valve is set up appropriately. Um, and then for our COVID-19 population, you want to make sure that you put uh, a filter in place to help with uh, cross-contamination. If you do not have those things available to you, if you do not have a one-way valve, if you don't have the mechanical inaccessulator, um, you can use a manual AMBU bag. Um, you can even use it on a patient without a tracheostomy, not quite as comfortable, um, but uh, with, for a patient with a tracheostomy, an AMBU bag and saline, especially if they're having mucus plugging, so the procedure would be to install um, a few cc's of saline, use the AMBU bag, and you're, not going, you're, you're going to be a bit more aggressive with the AMBU bag. So you're going to give some deeper, quicker breaths um, to help break up the mucus. And then you go through the suctioning technique uh, to clear the airway. And um, again, you would do that probably usually three to five times. So depending on what resources you have in your facility, um, that's a simplified version to accomplish uh, many of the same things. It, you could do the AMBU bag and use the manual cough as well um, to kind of mimic um, the cough assist device, the NXF lighter, XF lighter. So that's, that's one way, just depending on what resources you have to um, still accomplish uh, clearing that airway. Um, so I have put the address for the link and I can also type it into the comments um, for the manually assisted cough with LVR. It goes through step by step. I think that's probably um, if you have the materials to, to make the LVR. I think that's one of, if, if you don't have a mechanical and XF lighter, um, I think that's one of the most promising ways to maybe clear these secretions, help with the mucus plugging. So it goes through using that, what the process is, what the steps are. Um, so I appreciate your time. I thank you so much for getting to um, speak with you. I hope that this was uh, beneficial and that you were able to um, get some knowledge. Um, I am happy to answer any questions or if there are things that um, you know, uh, can be forwarded to me, um, then I would be happy to help in any way possible. And I appreciate being able to speak with you this evening.